What's up, what's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, cute queen, back at it again with you with another one. My glasses are turning off, though. Uh, y'all probably don't like this angle because I really don't like it, but I know y'all probably tired of being all up in my face and watching me. I'm finna eat again <laughs> for lunch. I just want to come give a little, um, let me show y'all what I'm eating real quick. So, y'all, this is six. 50. This is not worth six dollars and fifty cents. If you ask me, like it's not worth six dollars and fifty cents. You got well, I guess the cheese could be. That's probably why this cheese is expensive. But this is some good cheese. Got some tomatoes. Two slices of cucumber. Just come on now. They could have did better than that. Um, I think these might be like low calorie crackers. Just some chicken salad. And then I got some sweet potato chips. Just because I'm starving y'all. Do I have some milk in this? Oh yeah, and I got some, oh. Um, some cantaloupe, right? Yeah, cantaloupe. And I'm drinking a zero calorie body armor. No, yeah, y'all, so, sorry I'm eating, but I know I like to talk. I just feel like the reason why I'm being so open on YouTube is because, like, on my Facebook, my Instagram, my TikTok, I show my personality a lot. I show my funny side, but I don't, I don't show my deep side that much. I'm trying to, y'all. It's, it's different. It's a different. It's different because it's like I'm not used to showing that side of myself really at all that's why I've been struggling writing music lately because I haven't been showing the sensitive me and I just feel like it's it's just different to show the sensitive me over there because I'm so used to being the funny the funny dancing doing hair nails whatever me when you start eating healthy because I've been doing this for a long time, y'all. I've been on my health journey, like, serious since January. I didn't end up taking, like, a month or, or a month or two break because COVID. But I was still trying to eat right and stuff. And um, now I'm going further into my journey, longer into my journey. I know it's like I crave, like, tomatoes. I'm craving salads. I'm craving fruit. I'm craving. I'm craving freaking. Um, I want to eat some. Um, dang, what's that shit called? Squash. Why am I craving squash? I don't know, but I want some. <laughs> spicy I've come to the realization that my inner child needs healing which I feel like I always knew I needed some type of healing you know I just didn't know where to start you know I was always like what is wrong with me like why do I feel like this why do I think like this and I've just noticed, like, it's my inner child. Like, I've never healed her. I never hugged her. I never told her it was okay. I never told her it wasn't her fault. I've always just told her, like, why do people stare at you deep in your eyes while you, um, while you recording? Like, mind your business. If I look like I'm talking to myself, so what? So what? But yeah, she's never been held. Coddle, nothing, and I'm not expecting nobody from my past to come and apologize to me and admit that they was wrong. None of that. 
I'm expecting for myself to heal what was broken and for me to understand that if them people knew better, they do better. Because that's how I've been looking at myself. Like, if you knew better, you would do better. So I need to realize that for them too. Like, if they knew better, they would have did better. So, when it made me come to that realization that my inner child needed to be healed. I want to say it was it was a very lengthy process, but I was on the phone with my dude. Yeah, he had, he makes me have so many realizations about myself. That's the thing I love about our relationship is that like we make each other realize a lot about ourselves, and then even though it may be frustrating, like to hear the other person say some stuff, like if you actually stop and listen. To what they're saying you'll find some correlation to your life like i also have to realize that god be using people to talk to me god be using i'm already getting full like what the hell god be using people to talk to me and i had to realize that so when i realized that i had to sit back and just start listening and so at first I wasn't listening to him. And we was bickering and whatever. But one day I said, I was like, let me just shut up. Like, maybe I'm the problem. Let me just shut up and listen. And he was just reminding me of my old self. Like, how this one period of my life I was up financially. I was up mentally. I was up. I was just up. Like, life was good. It was great. It was great, actually, y'all. It was beautiful. And it was like, now it's like, if you work harder, but you're getting less. I'm like, I'm just not understanding. Like, what are you struggling with? And it was like a light bulb clicking. It was like, damn. It's my inner child. It's the young me. I realize, like, I'm, I'm living mentally. Mentally, I'm living the same life I was living as a kid, now as an adult, mentally. And that's not right. Like, I've grown a lot. I've learned a lot. I've been through a lot since I've been a kid. And there's no reason... But the time thing, like, there's no reason I should be living like this. But then I came to the realization, like, she needs some healing. Like, you know, the, the younger me got stepped on, ignored, shot down by people that told her they loved her and cared about her and they wanted what was best for her. And when I told them, well, I want this and I think this is best for me. They shot me down, told me that was it wasn't realistic. I need to think more realistic and boot the boo. And I feel like that put a lot of stuff in and in, into like role for me, like instantly. And when I'm talking about y'all, I did endure a lot of mental abuse from my father. And sometimes it was physical. Now, even when I got older, I got, it was physical and still mental. That's why I had to take my kids out of that situation. And I don't feel like I've ever healed myself from that. Like, I don't feel like I ever healed myself. Like, I used to just try my best to ignore it. I'm going to be real transparent with y'all right now. This is something I really never told anybody. I don't feel like I struggle with it anymore as far as what it was about. But I feel like I took a lot of that thinking on with me. So when I was younger, I would say when I was a younger, younger kid, like 6 and six to 10, 6 to 11. I would say 11, I started losing weight. 6 to 10, I was more chunky. Like, I was on the chunkies. Like, I've always been a chunky person. 
but six is like probably when I started getting like chunky and then like when I was 11 that's when I started working out myself in my room well I would hear all the time from my dad like you overweight you need to stop eating you overweight you need to stop eating and you need to go run on that treadmill and, and when he get mad y'all he, he get to saying outrageous stuff like Things that dad should say that it all like calling me out my name, calling me fat, and calling me out my name while calling me fat. Like, so when I was younger, I really used to think I was ugly. Like, I really used to think I was ugly, y'all. Like, I used to think I was so ugly like I couldn't even stand to look at myself in the mirror without thinking I was ugly and I used to literally pray every day every night that I would wake up pretty what does that even mean to wake up pretty you know what I'm saying like as a kid, I'm praying every day. Please, God, just let me wake up and be pretty. Let me wake up and be slimmer. Like, please, please, begging and crying, please. Every morning I woke up looking like myself. Every morning I woke up looking like myself. So I feel like a lot of that I brought on with me, like, now, okay, then, oh, that's what I forgot to tell y'all, too. And when my dad would say all that stuff, he didn't go cook a big-ass fattening meal. And I would enjoy the fuck out of it, because he can cook. So it was like, it was almost like, I had to endure something bad from him to get something good. Y'all, oh my God, I just had the realization. That's exact, everything my life was with him. That's exactly what it was. Like, he had to do something bad to us. He had to call us out our name, act crazy, hold us hostage, whoop us with a belt like we some got some slaves or something like he had to do that just so he could come back later and buy us tickets to Beyonce concert like so I guess I took that that pain and that type of I was just to say like he acted crazy I was gonna say his name I was almost gonna say he acted crazy and so y'all know we finna get some gifts or something now that I'm thinking about it y'all that's where this thinking comes from of, of me feeling like something bad has to, has to happen in order for me to get something good. Ugh! That is disgusting, y'all. That is really... Mm -mm. And this is what I mean by, like, my inner child needs to be healed. Like, she needs to know that that's not that's not good like she needs to know that good things just happen you don't have to endure abuse you don't have to feel pain you don't gotta cry yourself to sleep you don't gotta pray to wake up pretty to feel something good good things just happen like I just realized that y'all that is just it's just disgusting to know that it's just disgusting to know that it's just disgusting to know that that's where I got that from I guess it's disgusting to know that because I don't want anything to do with that part of my life I'm real quick, I'm real big on like leaving that alone. I'm real big on like not communicating with my, my dad no more. 
and stuff like that because of the stuff I went through. And so it's kind of just like disgusting to me to know that. But I can't beat myself up or blame myself for it because I was a kid and I was begging for help, like for my mom, begging her to stop letting us go over there, begging her to fight fight the courts to stop letting us go over there so we don't have to keep enduring this pain and she wouldn't do it she wouldn't do it god damn it fuck I'm gonna make some damn tiktoks in there yeah, she wouldn't do it she wouldn't take us away from that so it was just something I had to deal with. It was something that I had to put up with that I didn't want to put up with. I'm pretty sure I didn't eat 20 chips now, which I think. It's gonna be my last chip. Well, anyways, y'all, long story short, that's what I'm battling right now. I am battling this thought of I gotta feel bad to feel good. I gotta feel bad first to feel good. I don't know how I'm gonna get over this, but I am praying every day. Every time I feel that feeling that, and I realize I did it because today, y'all, I'm hoping for a new job opportunity. Y'all hoping it's happening. And I'm currently working as a housekeeper, like y'all know. And as I'm thinking of this new job opportunity, it's going to open a lot of doors for me. It's going to allow me to get more creative with my content. It's going to allow me to do more for my kids. It's going to allow me to take care of home, take care of my mans, make sure my mans is good all the time. And I really feel like it's going to help me get to that $38,000 max bonus because it's going to put me in position to get more creative with my content. So, as I'm thinking of all these good things, right? I'm thinking of all these good things this job can bring to me. I started feeling bad about the job I'm working. Instantly started feeling bad about the job I'm working. Like this is bad like where I'm at is bad because where I'm going is good so this has got to be bad you know and I don't want to think like that anymore I want to feel good about everything you know I do I want to have this look on life that's like this is good and it's gonna get even better that's the type of thinking I'm craving y'all I'm craving it because this thinking of Oh, this is bad. This is bad. So it's gonna. So it's, it's gotta be. Get, it's this. This is bad because my next step is gonna be so good. Like this next job, I'm truly it's gonna be so good. So this job I'm working is so bad. And I was thinking like, as soon as I felt that in my heart, and then I heard it in my mind, I said, "Stop. That's not true." I said, "Stop thinking that." I said, "Because you're working right now, and." The, the one I had to stop and tell myself like what's well, what's good about this like what's good about this right now and I was like well what's good about this right now is that when you get this new job opportunity you know you're gonna have a check coming to you um so you're not gonna miss no money you know how usually if you if you out of a job and you just get a job you gotta do the two weeks in the hole well I'm not gonna be doing that like yeah I'm gonna be doing that but I'm gonna still have this check coming so I'll be doing two weeks in the hole, but as soon as that two weeks is up, like I'm gonna get my check. Do I'm gonna do my two weeks in the hole, and I'm gonna end up getting my check. And once I get that check, I'll end up I'll, around that time. I should well around like maybe a week or so later, I should be getting the check from the new job. So that's why I was like, that's great. Like I've and if I'm being real transparent with you guys, I've never had that. I've never worked a job before I got a, a better job. So it's kind of scary. It's new. It's, it is new to me. I've always been 
assed out and then I work a job while I'm working I'm trying to hustle up money do hair whatever I gotta do to you know get me to to and from work hold me over until I get my check type thing so it feels it felt good to be like you're not gonna have to worry about no money like your check from this job gonna come then as soon as you get that check a week or so later you'll be getting the check from your new job so you're not gonna have to worry about no money and then your check from your new job is literally gonna be let me think how much more it's gonna be like almost eight hundred dollars more like like you're getting times two of what you're making like from this job it's gonna be like eight hundred dollars more y'all so it's like that's amazing like you'll have this check you'll be able to pay your bills with this check and you're still gonna have some change left over to get you to and from you know your new job and then once you you know clear that out you'll be getting that new check and it's gonna be up from there so i'm trying to rewire my brain and rewire my thinking because i have adopted you know, a little lengthy on the video. I don't know if y'all really like these 20 plus minute videos. I mean, just rambling on. But um, I'm, finna, I'm finna close it out. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I've just, I just realized I've adopted a lot of thinking from my childhood traumas. My childhood traumas pushed me into certain thinking, certain ways of handling things, and certain ways of thinking. And I've brought those into my adulthood. And it's not doing me no good, y'all. It's it's causing me to be in this never-ending struggle. And I've come to realize that if I'm struggling mentally, I'm going to be struggling outside. And I don't want that no more. I want a good fucking life, y'all. I want a beautiful life. I want a free life. I want an extravagant life. And then once I master it, I want to show others how to do it. So I, I just want to thank God. I just want to thank the universe. I just want to thank everybody who has hurt me, um, hurt me, disappointed me, didn't support me. And then I want to thank everybody that supports me guides me loves me unconditionally y'all my man really loves me unconditionally and i love him back unconditionally my sister loves me unconditionally and i love her back unconditionally my kids love me unconditionally and a lot of my supporters on my facebook showed me it gotta be unconditional because they don't know me they don't know me and they love me so i love them for loving me unconditionally and i just have to realize that a lot of the things I was feeling, I was feeling because I was thinking in that type of way. Like, I was thinking I don't have no support because I didn't have no support when I was younger. So it just automatically drilled into my mind that nobody supports me. And once I took that out of my mind, like, girl, you got this person, this person supporting you. And then look at your page. Like, look at all the people who constantly comment on your content and tell you that they love you and making their day. And they can't wait to be able to do it like you. Like, you, you have support. You need to cling on to that and stop thinking that there's a lack of something. You know, there's a lack. There's, I'm not lacking anything in my life. I'm not lacking anything in my life. Everything I have is to gain. And that's how I want to start looking at stuff. And I'm definitely removing this thinking of something bad got to happen for me to get to something good. Good things just happen, Q the queen. Little Q, listen, little Q. This is something that somebody should have told you. Good things just happen, okay? They just happen. You don't have to go through hell. You don't have to go through a storm to see something good. Sometimes good things just happen thank y'all for joining me on my little like y'all this is basically a show i'm gonna have to redo my intro to be like cue the queens talk show cue the queens talk show i'm gonna have to find me a little free beat and um uh, and make me a little song and, and throw a little something together because <laughs> this is basically a show y'all 
but if this resonated with you bless if if you feel like you've been having that same type of thinking i don't know if anybody else thinks like that that something bad gotta happen in order for them to have something good just know that good things do just happen they just happen and also believe that everything is working out for you so once you tell yourself that the more you tell yourself that good things are working out for you you'll start to realize everything works everything works but i love y'all uh i love y'all love everybody who love me i'm gonna catch y'all in the next one. Oh, oh y'all know i said i was coming with that video about what it's like messing with somebody in prison or having a prison babe and it's coming y'all it's coming it's really something that i it's it's really a personal topic it's real personal real personal some stuff gonna be mentioned that because my man told me like he was because i asked him like well are you okay he was like i don't think my opinion matters i said but it does because it's your life too and he was like honestly i think it's a good idea he's i think it's a great idea because people are gonna it's gonna open that what the hell like this funny ass thing oh maybe people are trash or something i don't know but he was like, people are, people are going to want to know the raw, what it's like messing with somebody in prison. Like, And he said, I think you should tell it all. He said, I think you should tell it all. Everything. Everything. I think you should tell it all. Don't leave nothing out. So that means it's going to have to be a little more personal. And it also means that people are going to get mentioned. Ain't nobody names going to be mentioned, but they will be mentioned because they were a part of my life and don't take it personal baby if your name get brought up don't take it personal don't be texting me don't be calling me don't be starting no drama talking about Ooh, q got on youtube and said this and she said that because yes i did i did you shouldn't have did it you shouldn't have did it shit but i don't regret nothing i did i'm gonna stand on everything i did because I'm, I'm always like i'm gonna stand on everything Anything I do, I stand on that. Stand on that. But I'm going to catch y'all in the next one. I love y'all.